I would have just disappeared that day and no one would have ever known what happened to me. Hello, New York. My first movie that I worked on was Bonnie and Clyde, and in that I was phase double and that means that in a lot of scenes where you can't be sure it's Faye, it's not, it's me. Um, so a lot of driving scenes, a lot of things like that. So I had one little scene in, a, in one of the bank robberies, but the whole scene got cut. <laughs> so that robbery went down the drain. Sleeping Beauty was really fun. Um, Canon Films had decided that they wanted to create an Israeli film industry. And they had decided that there was this niche market of um, fairy tales, that uh, there was a children's market that was missing. I mean, at this point, it, that sounds kind of quaint because Disney and Pixar and all of these are aimed so much at, at, at the childhood market. Back in the 80s, they thought they would do that, so they combined those two wishes of the childhood niche and Israeli. So we shot a bunch of fairy tales in Israel, which had no history of doing fairy tales, and it was a real challenge trying to shoot all these things in the desert and they didn't have any of the costumes so they were buying them from England and stuff so it was quite interesting. It was, a, it was fun because we had kind of an all-star cast. I mean Sylvia Miles was in it and Janie Weedland from the Go-Go's and um, uh, Christopher Walken was over shooting something, uh, Cloris Leachman was over shooting something so we had a very interesting kind of dinners and stuff. The feminism that came about in the 60s opened a lot of doors to women in all kinds of areas, from joining the military to having, you know, becoming CEOs, to better job opportunities, to higher pay. You know, in my lifetime, I have seen opportunities for women and for people of color expand greatly. When I was a little girl, I'd go into my mother's bridge club and they would all say, oh, what do you want to be when you grow up? And I'd say, a doctor. And they'd say, oh, you mean a nurse? And I'd say, no, I mean a doctor. But there weren't too many women doctors back then. Now you don't even think twice about it. So the doors that were opened at that time have stayed open. Certain administration people seem to be trying to close them a little bit now. But um, equal pay, uh, equal opportunity, across the board uh, I think is very important and, and it was something that was sort of started in the 60s. I was up visiting my sister in New York for the first time. She was going to Juilliard and I'd been over to Juilliard visiting her and I was walking home to her apartment broad daylight at 2 o'clock in the afternoon and um, just walking up the street and uh, a big guy comes up on one side and starts talking to me and I know you're not supposed to talk to people in New York, it's my first trip but I know, and another big guy comes up on the other side and they just pick me up by the elbows and shove me in this taxi that was right there and back in the 70s, you know, it was like, you know, thick plexiglass, the guy didn't speak English and so these guys proceeded to tell me all the things they were going to do to me, that they, one was a pimp and was a pusher, I know because they told me, and they were telling me all the drugs they were going to pump me full of and all the things so, that they were going to do with me. And, you know, I was just, I'm this Irish Texan, I was just damned if I was going to let them see how scared I was. So I, every time they'd tell me something, I would make a wisecrack. And they, you know, it went like that and I would make a wisecrack. Finally, one of them turned to the other one and said, you know, she's funny, let's let her go. And they, they got out of the cab, gave the guy some money and said, take her wherever she wants to go. I talked my way out of, you know, being a, uh, you know, a statistic in New York City. The thing I always remember is it was broad daylight. I was right by a bus stop. There were like 15 people standing at the bus stop. As I'm saying, help, 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 laughing at me and nobody helped. And I would have just disappeared that day and no one would have ever known what happened to me. Hello, New York. You know, acting is a very interesting experience. You always pull parts of it from yourself, and then other parts of it you try to view from the point of view of the character that you're playing. And so I do a lot of, depending on the character, I do a lot of research. When I'm playing a nun, I did a lot of research on the Franciscan Nuns Order, and um, a lot of, I was shooting in Bosnia, I did a lot of research on the area and the war and what was going on over there. The war was still going on. We were losing sound takes to the shelling of the village on the other side of the hill. Sometimes we were losing water pressure because they bombed Dubrovnik. Um, so, you know, but you try to do a lot of research into the history of your character. And, um, and then a lot of it, you bring of yourself those parts that you identify with that character that you bring forward. Morgan Fairchild, and this is Five Questions. <laughs>